This is the seventh in a series of modules about productive tutoring techniques. You, the viewer, will have an opportunity to see actual tutors handling real tutoring situations. These scenes will benefit you the most if you take time to think about and discuss what you see. Throughout this module, this screen will appear as a prompt for reflection and discussion. Tutoring has both short-term and long-term goals. A good tutor will help the student to understand the current material and to become prepared for an upcoming test. At the same time, the tutor will help the student improve study habits that will provide benefits throughout the student's academic career. Sometimes, the short-term and long-term goals of tutoring may be slightly at odds with one another. However, both goals are achieved when the tutor lets the student do the work in the tutoring session. When students do the work in the tutoring sessions, they get practice as well as feedback. The student's work then becomes the object of discussion, as seen in this session. So let's try, what if we did this one? Okay, I'll just do it like this. I don't know if I'm drawing this. Mm-hmm. That's right. right. This will come out here. Mm-hmm. And then this is on. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be Yep, a like pointy that. guy. And the only other important thing to remember about this is the fact that the orientation that these can either be both up, like the same side as the um, bridge head, mm -hmm. or they can be both down. So, so they those would are probably different be molecules. drawn like that. Both the number of questions and explanations that tutors use are often determined by the characteristics of the student. Vocal students naturally explain more of their own ideas and areas of confusion, so tutors do not have to probe as much as would be the case with more reserved students. Also, some students are more aware of their own needs and tend to take charge of the tutoring session. The session is more efficient with the student in charge because the student is able to confront head-on each area of confusion. Here is a scene from such a session. Like with one of those curvy areas, leave like that. Right. And this will just be left as a single line. Right. Okay. So that means it would be a base. Mm -hmm. And why, how would I know it wouldn't be an acid to you? Um. Because if, if um, pi bonds can get rid of one of the bonds mm -hmm. and get, donate those electrons, can a single bond accept electrons and become a double bond? Okay, think about what would happen. Let's look at these two here. In this scene, notice how Katie allows her student to set the pace of the session. You want to try another one? Sure. Um, Do you know what time it is? I just want to save enough to talk about that other stuff. Okay, well, if you want to move on to the next well, I mean, chapter I, I and just touch on it. Right. Um, we got time. Let's okay. do another one you want to. In low structure sessions, the student is willing and able to decide when to leave a topic or problem and move on to the next one. Here, the student summarizes her ideas to make sure she understands the topic. Well, I understand. So I think that's Just right. let me see over this one more time. Okay. This, this air is pointing this way, but actually the hydrogen's coming over here. Right. But the electrons are reaching over and grabbing it. Yeah. So that's why your air is going that way. Okay. So the arrows show the electron transfer. Right. Which would be going this way. Right. And then these electrons would be transferring here. Right. Okay. So that's why, okay. So it pulls this over here, and these two electrons, like these just connected and became one and stretched out mm -hmm. and touched the hydrogen. Okay. That makes so much sense. Got it? I got it. High structure is used when students need more guidance in the tutoring session or in their general approach to studying for the course. The higher structure is a way of modeling good study habits and strategies with the hope that, over time, students will form good habits and develop the skills needed to improve their academic performance. Here, Charles uses his own experiences to help outline for the student a strategy for test preparation. Okay, I got this one right. I know how to do this. I would suggest that you do, like, 
I don't know, however many problems you have time to do that are just doing that, set and equal to zero, because I think, I think that will help you be able to, to remember it, because we've talked about it, and you understand it, and you do it well now, um, you know, just set and equal to zero and solve them for like X. Like before the quiz? Mm-hmm. Just in studying, because I don't know how much, um, like, how much time you spend just working problems. But like I was telling you, like I did for my calculus test yesterday, I studied for hours, and I, I ended up with, like, eight pages of just worked problems where mm -hmm. I had just been doing examples from section after section. Because mm -hmm. I went through and, like, made an outline of all the material that the test was going to be on. Kind of like you have this outline here, and that's all the test material, right? This was the test. I'm just right. going over the test again. I think I already, I've already done this once, but I will forget it. Yeah, I think, for me anyway, once is not enough mm -hmm. to learn it. I mean, I, I, I could learn it with one example, and I would say, oh, yeah, that makes sense. I know how to do that now. Mm -hmm. But then to have to take it and turn around and, and do it myself and, like, start a new problem, then I forget sometimes. Yeah. So I just have to drill, and I think that might help you too. Okay, well, I'm just going to get trying to get another problem for, I mean, I'm, I'm sure that on the quiz she's not just going to be like, or the zeros, and that's it. So I'm going to have to go home and, like, look over each one of these. Yeah. Things, okay. That's, yeah, that's a good idea. Providing study tips is one example of high structure assistance. The tutor suggests ways for the student to study for the course in general or for a specific upcoming test. Feel better about that? Yeah. Good. Definitely. Okay. Um, you might just want to go through and practice these. I know they'll be a little more tricky, tricky than these, but um, just try them before next time and we can. Well, I can do it. I can tell you how to do it. I just can't parameterize the curves. Right. You know? Well, um, actually, the book that I that I was working out of, that I was looking at earlier, has some really, it, it breaks it down really well into different kinds of um, surfaces and how specifically to do each one. I'll give you it. It's really, really helpful. Like, it breaks it down into, you know, if you have this, then you just follow these steps, do it this mm -hmm. way. Often, students with a fair or good understanding of the material still have difficulty on the tests. The tutor can help by discussing strategies the students can use while taking the test. And they usually give you the Q and you have to figure out the, K, the KSP. Well, that's usually how it was on the test one that they gave you the Q. Yeah, I have, I have one here. Just before your test, you just maybe make a checklist of things that you need to make sure to watch out for. Yeah. And, or maybe the next tutoring session will do that and just sort of outline. References to lecture notes allow students to check their understanding of concepts from the lecture and help the tutor understand in general what is going on in class. And then I guess this right here, the mechanical, is just another way of saying your work. Isn't that another way of describing? Basic unit your, of energy is a joules. It is a small unit of energy. Mechanical and thermal. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then he just gave us the values of those, which were that. Mm hmm That's just standard. Okay. Well, all he does is read the stuff out of the book and put that on the, because it's all on the computer, and he just looks up and basically just reads off of it. Oh. So you don't really take notes. And he has little animation things. So it makes, like this, he have it animated. Uh-huh. So I, I understand this pretty much, because he, he showed mm -hmm. how they all turn and connect and yeah. grow and change. So there we understand the idea of vapor pressure. Okay. So isn't that like he had this drawn on the board? Like that? Exactly. Students have a lot to gain by being able to use their notes effectively on their own. In this scene, observe the initiative displayed by the student when Charles suggests that she consult her notes. What's your back, like what's your divisor? Like what would you divide by because you don't, two? Well. If I remember right, Obviously on this example, your teacher just started with one or negative one. I don't remember which one it he was. was and try. And just try one. Okay, back here. Is this the test that had half life stuff on? Yeah. Okay. I just want to see which one she started with. 
want a negative one. But that's because they were given. The negative one's given again. Negative one, negative one. One. Because x plus 1 is a factor, so you'd use the opposite of that, which is x minus 1. Mm -hmm. All right. The act of using the text and other resources in the tutoring session is beneficial in itself, but it also demonstrates to the student the particular way of using certain available resources. This aspect of tutoring is called the modeling effect. If a student then uses the modeled behaviors in future studying, this effect of tutoring becomes a long-term one. All right, complex ions. C, all right. Okay, well, let's flip back and we'll look at the stuff in the chapter and okay. see if we can pinpoint where the problem is. Here, Katie uses the text to support her explanation. Okay, a complex ion is an ion containing a central metal thing bonded to, to more molecules. Um, See so here, cobalt chloride. Mm -hmm. Cobalt is the metal, and it's got four chlorines around it. Let's look at this type of a question. We'll see what's different about this, if anything. And um, All right. Do you feel like it's pretty similar? We'll, we'll find out. All right. and they, would so, that be something that they're going to give me like on this table, you think? Um, probably if you're, it's all like yeah, you need to find like KF. They have to get right. Okay. So look at this table and see what you see what you know and see what's up here. All right. Later, Katie uses the text to pose a question. So if we have, um, can we use this example out of the book? Okay. You have zinc and copper. Mm -hmm. What's the charge on this zinc? Zero. Right. Okay. So is this zinc here being oxidized or being reduced? It's, things, it's being oxidized. It, right. Here are some other examples of using the text in the tutoring session. He mm -hmm. was like, that doesn't matter about the spaghetti on the sides. You just concentrate on these guys here. Okay. All right. And it does get more complicated, though, when you have... Do we have any more examples of these? Mm -hmm. Let's see. You may have... Like these right here. In the direction in which S moves, the distance between W1 and W2, those are the two waves, which is the wavelength prime, the new wavelength, is moving in that direction. V, the velocity, times the time, minus the velocity of the source times the time. And that's because it's getting smaller and smaller, the distance between it. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. And then they divided out the t's, and you got the real velocity. Like the answer in the book is like 16 pi or something like that. Yeah. Well, that's we did that. Well, they got the dot product is this. We got the dot product was something. Else As that. example 6 in section 14, so they had the same exact thing we did yeah. for the parameterization, right. except they didn't have a 2 in front. Yeah. But we could have... As example 6 in section 14.6, well, we can go there. This is a sphere of yeah. radius A. And they got that R cross thing is A squared sine phi. It would be 4 sine phi. When tutors talk about their favored ways of thinking about and solving problems, students learn a new strategy that they can use. This is particularly beneficial if the tutor and student share similar learning styles. Should I start with, um, I just do all ethers as many as I can, then start with alcohols, or is it okay to switch back and forth and just put any? However you can think of it logically. Okay. Um, come up with a system and then stick with it. Okay. Let's see, four squared is what? Or four to oh, the fourth. Yeah, I could do that. Might be easier. Two hundred fifty-six x to the fifth. Yeah. All right. And so I always find it easier to go ahead and solve for or simplify this before yeah. going on. Yeah. Can understand that. 
However, tutors should always give students a chance to do the problems on their own before offering any assistance. Here, Jessica waits about 10 seconds before offering advice. This, was this a co covalent bond? Mm-hmm. That was broken? Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, interesting. One more. Okay. Um. Okay, my suggestion for this is to start with drawing your um, Lewis dot structure of both molecules. Students should become adept at utilizing other campus resources for more than one reason. The profitable use of other resources, such as instructors, teaching assistants, and supplemental instruction sessions, is a valuable skill that will help the student in future courses. Also, the tutor should be viewed as just one of those resources. The student should be aware that the tutor is not responsible for knowing all the answers. Hmm. Let's see here. I can ask her tonight if you want me to. Let's see. Yeah, go ahead and ask her. Let's see what okay. she says, because I'm not exactly sure. Do you have a special sheet? Uh, I don't know. Things are scattered. I went to okay. SI last night. Was, okay, that's good. Well, was it helpful at all? Yeah, it was. Okay. He basically just talks about what's going to be on the quiz. Put on the board today. Go to his office and talk to him about it, because, I mean, he's always there. Oh, really? He's, he's usually there today. Oh, I thought, like, his office hours from, like, 11 to... Like right after our class, like yeah, that's one thing about office like hours is you can sometimes just drop by and they'll be there. So he's he's usually there on Wednesday, so because that's when I go and talk to him. Oh, okay. Let's review the things tutors can do to help students become independent learners. First, it's important that students do the work in the sessions. Activities such as working problems and discussing concepts provide practice for students, allow students to build on their own ideas and enable tutors to provide positive reinforcement and feedback. Tutors should provide an amount of structure that is appropriate to the student and the situation. High structure is used by a tutor whenever a student needs it, with the hope that the student will develop better study skills and need less structure in the future. An example of higher structure is to suggest ways of studying when students are not using effective methods on their own. Test-taking strategies might be discussed, especially when students' test scores do not seem to match their knowledge levels. The student takes steps towards being an independent learner when the tutor refers to the lecture notes taken by the student in class and to the text. Utilizing these resources helps the tutor understand the content for which the student is responsible and helps the student learn to take maximum advantage of the study resources available, both in the current course and in future courses. Tutors should provide problem-solving tips when students are unable to work the problems on their own. Finally, tutors should promote the use of any and all campus resources available to students, including other tutorial programs, teaching assistants, and professors.